Another restless night. Been up too long trying to find a pattern that I don't really believe in. All this talk about starters, fossils, pseudo legendaries, just to lead me back to the start. Is there really an early dark type archetype? Initially, I'm hesitant as it seems arbitrary. Why does there need to be a dark type in the early routes? But the more I questioned it, the deeper I found myself in this rabbit hole. When there's a roster of creatures, were some of them made for your antagonists? And I mean mons like cannon fodder enemies. But the thing is, in a game like Pokemon, those very same creatures could be worthwhile to put on your own team. Is there really a pattern here? What really goes into making mons that the underlings use? We'll try to crack this case today, as we look at some of the earlier grunt encounters to possibly look at what kind of designs are fitted for the antagonist team. We're talking broad strokes, so I won't get caught up on what every grunt has, I'll just focus on the new designs for that generation. If you've been following my channel, you know that I'm making my own science-based creature collector, so I'll be sharing one of my own relevant lines at the end of this video. With all that said, Let's start, shall we? The series starts off quite innocently, as you're a little kid going off on an adventure. But gasp! You encounter a mean adult who steals Pokemon and items. That is no good. But then you slowly discover how entrenched this team is in the whole region from controlling the game corner and even some of the gym leaders being part of the team. Your main goal was never to defeat Team Rocket, you're just a kid minding their own business, trying to be the very best. But you stumble across them and foil their plans. So what mons did Team Rocket use? Well in contrast to the anime, the earliest grunts used Sanshu, Rattata, Zubat, and Ekans. Sanshu? I thought you were Cinnamon Bun. What are you hiding? And that's the thing. Were these designs made for Team Rocket, or did the Team Rocket plot come after the mons were designed and the decks was cherry picked for the antagonist to wield? For this generation, the team uses quite a selection of mons throughout the game, which could make sense because they're supposed to be going around stealing mons. Mind you, there's no dark types yet because that was introduced in generation 2, so a lot of the mons were poison type. Which, eh, uh, there were a lot of poison in the original 151 anyways. I guess you can justify that a lot of ground types were used because their leader, Giovanni, specializes with ground types. I don't know, with the whole Mafia vibes of Team Rocket, I think Giovanni's Pokemon used to have a family theming, as they used to use the Kangaskhan and the Nidos. I don't know, I'm probably looking too deep into this. You know, Team Rocket was still the antagonist team in Generation 2, but they're all in disarray after events of the previous game. As Dark Type actually means Evil Type in Japan, literally called Aku, did Team Rocket accrue any of these new Evil Type mons? Not really. I guess there's a new evolution to Zubat's line, but the Grunts don't even use that. In fact, in Gold, Silver, and Crystal, they only have Pokemon from the first generation. Now, before we move on, I know in the anime, Jesse and James have their own roster of Pokemon, most notably Meowth being the opposing mascot to Ash's Pikachu. So color me surprised that the very first games, Red and Blue, didn't even give Giovanni a Persian. Now, he gets one in Pokemon Yellow, and Team Rocket would get new rosters in remakes and other games, but we're focusing on the first games of the generations, as those are the games that would tell whether the Pokemon were made for the antagonist teams or not. And so far, I'm not convinced that there's a suspect here in Generations 1 and 2. But how about Hoenn? Generation 3's Hoenn not only brought a new antagonist, but they went double time, as we got Team Aqua and Team Magma, depending on which version you got. Jocks and nerds doing equally dumb things to the climate, so what kind of mons do they use? Well, they both use Zubats, just like the previous Team Rocket, and they both use a new Gen 3 mon called Poochiena. Now we're talking. This is the first new mon on the board that's widely used amongst the grunts. A hyena that's ready to fight. Well, about that. Generation 3 started giving out abilities, and it kind of tells a story here, as the baby Poochiena wants to run away, but when they grow up, they are the one who intimidates. It's a great detail. And they're not the only Gen 3 mon that either team uses. 
Team Aqua also uses the Water Dark Carvana, fitting for their nautically themed team, and Team Magma uses the Fire Ground Nummel. So this generation is a special case where there's three new lines from the decks that seem to be tailored for the grunts, two of which are due to version differences. And boy do those grunts like to use these mods in Zubat. In the original Ruby and Sapphire games, the grunts only use these three, making these teams use the smallest variety of mons. Their respective team leaders, Archie and Maxi, just use the evolutions of the aforementioned mons. Actually, come to think of it, these grunts rarely ever fully evolve their mons. Interesting. Sinnoh's Team Galactic is about making a new world that would accept their terrible bowl cuts. So what mons do they use? This is the third evil team we saw using Zubat. Why? It's just the little guy. But I think by now this shows how Zubat is supposed to be the evil team's choice, retroactively making it the grunt mon. Galactic also uses a lot of the Wurmple line from Generation 3. I don't know why. But let's look at what Gen 4 mons this Gen 4 team used. The most popular were Glammeow, Stunky, and Krogunk. Seemingly random choices, but it makes more sense when you consider the next rank above these grunts. The Galactic Commanders each wield evolutions of these lines and Bronzors for some reason. Unlike the previous generation where the variety was very restricted for the grunts, now they can run different factions under these commanders and present you with different mons throughout the game, while not being as jumbled as Team Rocket's choices. Honestly, a very cool way to organize these encounters. Although I'm mostly looking at the grunts today because the leader's mons could really be any strong fully evolved mon, I wanted to shout out Gen 4's galactic leader Cyrus as he does a great job of showcasing this generation's identity where old mons are given new evolutions. Initially his team only has mons from the previous generations, but half of his final team are the two new dark type evolutions introduced in generation 4. Even if the grunts don't really show these new evolutions, it's cool to see their leader take advantage of it. Welcome to Black and White's Unova. Famous for their complete dex reset as you'll never see any of the old mods until post game. This is the ultimate opportunity to look at the archetypes because now they cannot rely on any past Pokemon to give to the evil team plasma grunts. They'll have to make a new mon to fill any niche. And this is where we get to see those evil type Pokemon be put to use. Purloin, Sandile, and Scraggy are all dark types that grunts use, of which Purloin is one of the more earlier ones you meet. They also use a lot of the normal type Pat Rat, similar to how Team Rocket had a lot of Rattatas on their team. But while Team Rocket used a lot of Zubats, Team Plasma didn't really use Unova's Woobat. Despite the poison type Trubbish some of the later grunts use, this generation really emphasized the use of dark types in the antagonist teams. Even some of the other Plasma characters like N and Getsis would have iconic dark type Pokemon associated with them. But does the antagonist team always have to be dark type? As an inverse of Generation 5's lack of old mons, Gen 6's Team Flare only uses old mons. Why? Bulbapedia just mentions that they mostly use poison and dark type mons, which Honestly sounds like a missed opportunity, like every other team did that. You are named Team Flare. Where are the fire types? Shut up. Shut up. It's just Houndour that came out 14 years before this game. I mean, even if they want to use poison and dark lines, why don't they at least include some of the Kalos mons? There's like two dark lines other than Grindinja and Yveltal. Uh, no worries. How about poison? There's only one poison line. Yo, Kalos is tiny. I guess most of the dex was moved out of the way for the next mega evolution gimmick, but you barely engage with any NPCs that mega evolve. And even though the leader Lysander uses a mega Gyarados where it gains a dark type, it still feels a little tacked on because he looks like Pyroar. He's all fiery. Why is his mega choice a water dark one? There's even mega Houndoom in this dex. Why doesn't he use that? While one can argue that a few designs might have been made for the antagonists, I don't think any were really made for the grunts as a run-of-the-mill enemy this generation. 
Let's go, best team! As each generation kept trying to ramp up the stakes to basically threatening to destroy the whole world, Sun and Moon pulled it back and made one of the most compelling antagonists so far. Team Skull is a bunch of punks loitering about doing petty crimes. They still get in the way, but they're not trying to blow up the world or anything. Now the grunts use a few old Pokemon, a lot of poison types, a weirdly large number of Kanto Mons. But when it comes to Alola, they got Fomantis and Salandit, pre-evolutions to the boss battles you encounter later in the game called Totem Pokemon. Speaking of, a lot of grunts use the Alolan Rotata line, another Totem Pokemon. The Totem pattern stops here, but these grunts showcase one of the game's unique additions, regional variants. Maybe this is why a lot of the Skull Grunts have Gen 1 Pokemon, because all of the regional variants in Alola are variants of Kanto Pokemon, a lot of which turn Dark type. So you got Alola Rattata and Grimer on some of their teams as well. Their leader Guzma is a bug specialist. His Ace Golisopause ability make them switch out of battle at low HP, literally called Wimp Out which is renamed to Emergency Exit for the evolution. is a very cute detail of how such an intimidating Pokemon with such a strong first impression still wants to run away. It would have been really fun to see the Grunts focus on a type other than Dark for once, but this team does have a little more variety than past teams. There's another faction in Sun and Moon, that being the nerds in the Aether Foundation, but I don't think they have a theme. Just a bunch of random mons here and there. I guess the leader uses a psychic hypno. Who knows, maybe there's a story behind each of them, but we're chasing another story today. I think this generation was when I first heard a lot of people talking about an early dark archetype because the antagonist team of this generation only uses dark type or would be dark types because they are ultimately representing the dark type gym of the region. With that said, there are two early dark types, if you want to call that an archetype, with the Clever Fox Nickets line and the Kiss Punk Galarian Zigzagoon line. The latter shares a lot of similarities to the gym leader associated with Team Yell, and to call these guys evil kind of feels off, as they're just rooting for the leader's younger sister. They could be a little rude, but they're not trying to nuke the world. Okay, but speaking of nuking the world, I forgot there was the macro cosmos business near the end of the game that tries to do just that, and this time, their team is themed around a type, as most of them use various steel types. Does this mean the steel type Galarian Mouth was made for villains this whole time? Well, we can never know, but I have a feeling that these steel types were just cherry picked from the region to follow the leader's type specialty. The biggest takeaway here is that some evil teams could be type-based other than just dark and poison. Generation 9 breaks a lot of pre-established patterns as they're expanding the game from a structured linear path into a more open world experience. Eh, still pretty linear due to level gaps, but it's certainly a turn for something different in the horizon. That's why you barely even see grunts in this game other than the five different bases that they set up. There's a bunch of kids skipping school. The mons you find in these bases are centered around the type of that base, and since there are five of them, we get to see more than just dark and poison types. The thing is, in those bases, until you fight the base leader, you walk around and auto battled a bunch of wandering Pokemon, so it feels less personal than the grunt encounters of the past. Some people call Mastiff's line the early dark archetype, which I guess some NPCs use, but the effect is much smaller because you're not fighting these guys in combat over and over, and I think that's part of the takeaway of this case. Pokemon that are designed for the antagonist team are ones you would fight against multiple times, the ones you would beat multiple times, but they should be compelling enough for you to consider having one of your own because the game lets you choose those very same mons. Most times than not, you meet these teams pretty early on in the game, which means that the creatures to Grunts wield aren't that abstract because the player is still getting eased into the game, so often they're cats or foxes. While you would steamroll these underlings most of the time, the Grunts often leave an evolution open, so when you use the same creature and evolve them, it might be a worthwhile addition to your team. Kind of thematic with Zubat's final stage requiring high friendship, something that a nice trainer like you can give to these Pokemon. And while most of these Grunt Pokemon have been dark and poison types so far, 
I'd love to see more variety in the future, like what we saw in the more recent games. So I guess it's time to show you what I have for my stem-based creature collector. I'm not ready to talk about the antagonist in Stemma yet, but there is a design that would help make the early route a little more populated. So here's Levestress, a coward of a bunny frozen in fear. When one is afraid, they activate their sympathetic nervous system, which increases their heart rate and dilates their pupils and muscles as they have a fight or flight response. It keeps your muscles ready for movement and big pupils to make you more aware of your surroundings. Speaking of fight or flight, Levestris can evolve into Lago Might. Fight form if you win 5 encounters after a certain level, and flight form if you choose to run away 5 times instead. The sympathetic nervous response prepares you to encounter or avoid a dangerous situation, and while that's important to deal with the situation at hand, it's also important to get rest, or your body suffers by being in distressed state for too long. Resting is called a parasympathetic response, which lets you digest and store up energy for later. I didn't make a design for that. But also, there are some recent studies suggesting adding other responses to the sympathetic nervous system. And having these kind of stress responses regularly could be detrimental to your health, and you need proper time and care to recuperate yourself. You don't need me to remind you, but mental health is very important to maintain. Make sure you're not stressing over an issue for too long. Not only would it be less productive being stressed all the time, but it's also bad for your health. So case closed. It seems that players get to see some dark or poison type mods pretty early on in the game, as that's what most of the antagonist team's grunts use. But the grunts rarely evolve these mods, leaving it up to you to realize their full potential. Thank you so much for watching till the end, and thank you to my Patreon subscribers. Some of the higher tiers would also have access to old notes and other sketches, but if you liked the video, you could always subscribe and share the video for free. I have a whole playlist here of all the videos that include my stem-based mon so far. Thank you all so much again, and I'll see you in the next one.